welcome back to another episode of Church Conversations Over Coffee. My name's Kevin. I'm the youth director here, and I'm sitting down with Billy Arnold as we debrief his most recent sermon. All right, so Billy, we just finished your sermon. It is Sunday, May 3rd, our last Sunday in the Epic series. Can you just give us a quick overview of what you talked about? Quick overview of this section is I'd split up Romans in in my uh, organizational way in four parts, and this was the last part of the Mm -hmm. chapter, really verses, chapter 8, verses 31 to 39, which is the crescendo, in my view, of, of that chapter. And even though it sits in the literally the middle of the book of Romans, mm-hmm. I get that. Um, it's not the complete picture of everything, but it just is such a high water mark. And um, I called it God's epic finale mm-hmm. uh, and our participation in God's uh, uh, grand finale of what it means to live that life with assurance in, in Christ. So, so uh, in the sermon, you had it kind of broken down with that, was it like seven... Two seven four three two one. Two seven four three two one. Just kind of the way I organize. Yeah. So so tell, let's talk through that a little bit. What? How did you get there? What does that look like? As I begin to kind of analyze the Bible, I wasn't trying to be the great commentator, <laughs> but seriously, as as I read a lot of commentary and really just poured myself through yeah. this over the last few weeks. You know, some things kind of just pop out and you go, okay, there's two things here. Uh, the two assurances that we have for a fact that, that God does love us mm-hmm. and that um, uh, God, uh, it will always be interceding for us. And mm-hmm. if you start there, that's how it starts in that verse, in verse, in really in starting verse 31, it kind of laid itself out. Yeah. But then there were seven calamities that happened in all of humanity. That's And that's what popped out in that, uh, you know, that next part of the, the, the section there for me, uh, what what can separate us from Christ? It was a question there. Yeah. It starts out in verse thirty one. Says who? What's our response to this? And our response is that we have two assurances: God loves us, God's interceding for us. But then there's seven uh, distresses. There's seven calamities. There's mm-hmm. seven uh, gigantic wars, in a sense, made on humanity. And it lists them. You know, what can separate us? Trouble, hardship, persecution, famines, nakedness, danger, peril, sword. All those. Mm-hmm. Kind of words that pop out uh, in that way. But then you go to the four uh, things that I said, and that was the number four for me, which just as I'm reading that, as I'm commentating through that, uh, you, you you know, it, it uses that Psalm 44 verse that says we face danger all day long like a sheep to be slaughtered. Mm-hmm. And it's four realities of who we are. You know, we're doomed. We're, we're, we're destined to, you know, left to ourselves. You know, and I use words like worm and, and and uh, those are kind of not from Romans 8, but they're, you know, we're maggots, Job says. He mm-hmm. calls us really, we're kind of hopeless and helpless. But those are the realities of a human being. But then the three uh, comes back down into the next, in, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. And I read into that, mm-hmm. the partnered with Christ. You know, we, we, are, we are victors in him, not in ourselves. It's not like you're a victor. I'm yeah. a victor. In Christ, we become victors because through him, and that's that partnership I mm-hmm. had there that led us to the two. And I arrived at that number because I do recognize, and I've always believed that really God's saying there are two kinds of people in this world. There's the lost and the found. And it doesn't make the found any more precious than the lost. In fact, if anything, the Bible speaks heavily about the lost, mm-hmm. God's priority to the lost. But there are people who don't know this, mm-hmm. don't trust that. And if you're part of the lost, then you revert and you live your life under the realities of the seven and the four. But if you're the found, you live your life under the reality of the three. Mm-hmm. That is, we're partnered with God in that way. We're part of his family. We're part of that assurance. But the one, ultimately, yeah. the summary of my sermon, Kevin, but the one is the only answer yeah. is Jesus Christ. The one so one of the things that first comes to mind 
uh, hearing that and listening to your sermon this morning was how do we approach scripture and and read that list of seven things without moralizing it and and like how do we actually apply it to our lives or or when we read calamity do we look at that and, and say oh man I'm going through the same thing with coronavirus I lost my job like how do we balance that because obviously when Paul wrote this he wasn't thinking of coronavirus or or us losing our modern day job or the comforts of Western life, you know, he was writing to a specific audience, a specific time period. How do we apply this? Well, he wasn't writing to the coronavirus, but yeah. I would partially disagree and say, no, he actually was mm-hmm. because the coronavirus is the reality yeah. of this world. We tend to gloss over life and want things to go well, and we think God's blessing us when things are actually going relatively well. Mm-hmm. The reality is the, the viruses of the world are, are never ending. Yeah. If, if it's not, it's this today, it's something else tomorrow. It's never ending. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I do think you, you know, this truth was written. Mm -hmm. But your comment about moralizing stuff, I think that's one of the greatest dangers always. I think you, in my mind, you, you, you said it right. Um, The danger of reading scripture always is kind of putting God's moral lesson. Yeah. Something. And I get it. There is a moral lesson Mm -hmm. source to some things in life. You know, don't do this and do this. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, left to ourselves, it doesn't matter. You know, you're doomed. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you're, you're destined um, in that way. You're like the sheep to be slaughtered. So we do have this sort of, I think, the, you know, the church in general and teachers of the Bible way too often bring out God's happy three-step plan. Yeah. Uh, and that's the moralizing things. Mm-hmm. Uh, even this verse, it, it, my head. In, in the top of verse 28, it says more than conquerors. Sometimes it puts it at the top of 31, verse mm-hmm. 31. We are more than conquerors. People use that and go, that's what yeah. I am. I'm supposed to be a conqueror. I'm, I'm, I'm the champion. Yeah. And the, that's an incorrect, incomplete reading of that. Mm-hmm. I am not the champion. I'm not the conqueror. Through Christ, I become partners in the way that I am then the conqueror. Mm-hmm. It's not about me. It's about him. Yeah. Well, and, and yeah. well, that that even kind of, I think it's, it'd be easy to approach this and read it as like a, if I, if I do A and then I do B, it'll equal C. And so if I turn to God, if I, you know, live my life morally well, then I'll be blessed. And it's like, that. well, that's, yeah, I, I think that's what you're getting at. It's yeah, like, that's the incomplete view because what blessing, you will be blessed, but what blessing looks like isn't always a good, easy life. It doesn't mean we're going to not go through any hardships. Um, where ultimately it means that we'll be in right relationship with Christ and whatever that looks like. Which kind of brings us to the next question of, so what does, looking at the, the two types of people, what does it look like if we are f- lost, what does it look like for us to become found? What, or so, so I'm thinking the person listening to this sermon who uh, has not accepted a relationship, has not uh, been obedient to God's call in their life, has not developed a, a personal relationship with Christ, what does it look like for them to do that? And then on the flip side, for somebody who is found already, what does it look like? like for them to help others be found? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, in in sometimes our evangelical kind of world, we we say, here's what you do Mm -hmm. in faith. And I actually believe that. Uh, I was watching a commercial. Uh, it's one that's out on a lot these days, but a commercial of someone who's on, who's literally doing a paid commercial, uh, evangelical believer who said, this is how you go to trust Christ. Mm-hmm. And I think he's doing exactly the right thing. Uh, bottom line is what is said is in its simplistic form, it's the recognition of my depravity mm-hmm. and, and, and literally just sort of opening up my heart to the almighty. What God does with that, I mean, it's it's not a three-step plan of happiness. Yeah. But honestly, it is really is fairly simple that's 
life altering. That's mm -hmm. maybe the reason I use the term epic through this chapter. It's an epic transformation that starts in a simple fashion. It really is the person just, you know, having that tug of God in their heart and saying, I, I somehow I recognize I can't do this. Yeah. You know? And is it magic words? No, it's not magic words. It, it's, you know, again, we often use the term bow your heads and say this prayer mm -hmm. after me. And I've actually done that with people. Yeah. You have too. And, uh, but in, in, when, when we trust Christ, it really is somehow mm -hmm. heartfelt willingness to say, I have a depravity in my life that cannot be filled with anything but me. I don't even have all the answers about who Christ is or who God is really, mm -hmm. but I know enough to know that I want to invite this eternal God and I trust in what Christ has done. I invite him to yeah. my heart. With a child, it's somehow the image is easier when we say, invite Jesus to move into your heart, mm -hmm. take control of your life. As a child, we understand that easier because a parent kind of controls the destination yeah. of a child, right? You know, if, if, if you have a child and you say, child, we're going to go here, they're going to go there yeah. because you're driving the car and you're in control of what the destination is. As you get to be an adult, you get to make your own choices. Mm -hmm. To become a follower of Christ is like becoming a child like that again. It's literally saying, God, I'm tired of ruling it on my own. Mm -hmm. I want to give it over to you. And it's a process, but it also is a one-time step, Yeah, if that makes sense. Yeah, And I think that's really what I would, in, in simplistic form, mm -hmm. anyone who can just say, I want to become like a child again. Mm -hmm. I want Christ to be in charge. I invite you, God, to uh, Christ, I believe what you've done. Yeah. Without even understanding everything about it. Yeah. And I trust you with my life. Yeah, I think it, it, it I mean, I'm reminded Reminded of Romans ten nine, I think is is what shall we do to be saved? Yeah. You know, repent, confess yeah. with our mouth, believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord, and you shall be saved. And I think that, yeah, I think that there isn't your. The temptation is to say, hey, repeat after me, and then you're saved. In reality, that the thing we say doesn't save us. It's Christ that saves us. It's our recognition of our sinful nature and that we need to die to ourselves and live for Christ. And That's right. That, like, there, nobody, I can't, we can't judge somebody else's salvation. We can judge by their fruit, but we can't say, you know, whether or not somebody is saved. And, and so it, that's where that the repeat after me prayer comes in. Yeah, it does. Um, I it's think, a valuable prayer. Yeah, totally. I'm just always cautious of it because of what it communicates, this idea that it's this magic formula that you can yeah. say and then you're safe. Say so. these magic words, yeah. this will happen to you. That's my fear, but I think I see the nece uh, necessity of it, but my fear is that people will misunderstand that at times. Words are often all we have. However, mm -hmm. I will point from a sermon, what was it, two weeks ago, with groanings yeah. too deep for words. In mm -hmm. other words, Frankly, even that indicates to me that there are no magic words. Yeah. There's sometimes a yearning inside of our heart. They go, yeah. I don't even, I don't even know how to express the words that I want to say. Mm -hmm. Except, I need you. Yeah. You know, I need you. Uh, and I think that's really what that is. Mm -hmm. But you're right. Words sometimes are, you know, that's what we have. And yeah. in my case, totally. in your case, I have English words. Mm -hmm. You know, God doesn't, I mean, there's, there's, and, and words only reflect when it's deeper seated, they only reflect something that comes out of me, a yearning in yeah. my life. And I think that's how you come to faith. Yeah, totally. Which uh, kind of leads us to now the second point. For uh, somebody listening to this sermon, I imagine the majority of the people listening to this podcast and to your sermon on Sunday uh, have a relationship with Christ. They are regular attenders at, at Lifeway. And so for them, they may be wondering, what does it look like for me to now share this truth with my neighbor, with my sister? sibling, with my parents, with my kids. And so what, what are some practical ways that we can be more evangelistic, even during coronavirus? Mm -hmm. I, I have come to believe that, that most people, uh, no, all people at some point in their life get scared. Mm -hmm. 
uh, the, the this past Sunday sermon, you know, used that list of all the sep th things that potentially can separate us: danger, hardship, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, sword. Those kinds of things are just a simple list, but an incredibly powerful list of the constant uncertainty of life. Mm -hmm. Everybody, every human being, I'm convinced of this. I don't care, rich, poor, super wealthy, uh, to the super poor, uh, any culture, any language, any background, any government system that we're under, uh, hits the edge of life and the uncertainties that are out there. Mm -hmm. I think the believers, as, as we bring this message of lost and found to a world, I think there, um, uh, the message is always going to be out there. It doesn't always hit home with people because mm -hmm. when we have a sense, when humanity has a sense of I'm in control, yeah. then we're, we tend to not listen very well. It's when we get out of control, when life gets out of control for us that we go, whoa, 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 I lost my business. I mm -hmm. lost my health. Uh, I lost my, you know, my job. I, I lost my marriage. I lost, you know, it's a, we often in, in counseling circles call it a crisis moment. The thing is, you know, life is not just an avoidance of crisis. It's a, it's a management of our crisis because yeah. we all have it, but it, it's those moments in life that people most of the time are most willing to wake up. Mm -hmm. Now, the best part is when people are not necessarily in that human crisis, but they have the human, they have the, the maturity to recognize that, that crisis, we know that we yeah. sort of live on that edge and boy, do I need something more? I, I think about, I'm not going to name names because I don't on the internet, don't want to make fun <laughs> of anybody, but you know, some of the most super wealthy people that have ever lived on the planet mm -hmm. have reached that edge. One of them I can think of just, you know, had humanly speaking everything and anything at their disposal mm -hmm. and except their health. Yeah. And they could not buy it mm -hmm. and ended up dying from it. Now that's happened throughout history over and over and over and over again. Yeah. And um, so we know that wealth does not attain that. Everybody reaches a crisis. Everybody reaches an uncertainty. Everybody reaches the edge of the precipice mm -hmm. at some point. It's the the wisdom of a human being to recognize if I'm not on the edge, I know that I'm approaching the yeah. edge. Our job as believers is to keep the message in front of people. Mm -hmm. Some people will listen. Some people will respond early or later. Uh, but uh, some people don't. Yeah. I think at the end, our responsibility as a believer, I think it was your question, what is our responsibility as a believer to bring this message? Keep this truth in front of people. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not like you have to become the preacher that's constantly, you're gloom and doom, yeah. you're going to die and you're going to go to hell if you don't come to repent. Well, the truth is you're going to reach a crisis. And, mm -hmm. and, and in Second Peter, it says, always be prepared to give an answer to those who are seeking the truth and, and the hope that you have. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's just one of those great monumental truths that out there. I want to keep the answer out in front of me. Yeah. It's funny you actually bring up that verse because I think... Uh, uh, one of my favorite parts about that book verse, and it's one of Rachel and I's favorite verses, always be able to give a answer for the hope that you have, but do this with gentleness and respect. And I think that that's often what people forget is I need to like beat this into somebody so that until they believe, but the reality is we have to do this with gentleness and respect um, as we share it with those who don't believe. One of the first sermons I ever preached was at the Portland Rescue Mission, and it was a hard sermon because they asked me to preach on humility and out of I think it was out of the book of Luke I don't remember the exact passage but I remember really struggling because how do you preach about humility to people who are living in extremely humble circumstances and my main point was essentially everybody is going to be humbled we have the choice of evil of either humbling ourselves before the Lord or the Lord humbling us mm -hmm. and often when the Lord humbles us it is uh, it takes much more drastic measures and that's when our, our job gets taken away from us our I mean you talk about the chaos of life uh, and so I don't know I guess my my encouragement for somebody listening to this is to um, in gentleness and respect is to share this hope that we 
we have yeah. and share the reality of the chaos of life can only be calmed by Christ. And I, actually, so the youth and I, uh, with, we as a youth group are reading through the New Testament in 90 days. We just started on May 1st. Uh, today's day three. I think it was... Yeah, it was yesterday we read the Beatitudes, five, Matthew 5 through 7. And one of the things that struck me was it talks about the, and we talk about this a lot, it's pretty well known in Christian culture, of building our house on the rock. But what stuck out to me was the phrase, when the storms of life comes, it's not if, if the, storm. the storms, it's when the storms of life comes, you're safe because you've built your house on the rock. And I think that that's what we need to ask ourselves is, and then help others do. We need to help others. Once once we've built our, our house on the rock, we need to help others build their house on the rock. Always be prepared. Yeah. Give an answer for the hope. That you yeah. Have. And so, I mean, right, honestly, right now, it's kind of a great time to do that because everybody's stuck at home. Everybody's in the same situation. And so it's an awesome time to share this message with people. Invite people to church on Sunday. Post it on your Facebook or your Instagram or whatever. Share the, the link. Actually, one, one gentleman on our church uh, invited people co-workers to this and just sent the link in an email if people don't want to join they don't have to you know they're not going to come it's right. easy to do and I think there's stuff like that that we can be doing now um, to make this step even in my own family I've, I've been trying to send out every Sunday I'll send out and invite my siblings to come watch this and I actually use Rachel a lot of times because I'll say hey Rachel's playing guitar today so come watch her uh, as a way to get people sure. in you know um, I've and done to, the same thing. yeah to invite people in and I think that that's one easy thing we can be doing now now to, to, as those who have been found to help others uh, come into the light. Yeah. Live with Romans 8. Yeah. Again, it, this whole series has been just, just one chapter, and it's there's so many chapters in the Bible. Yeah. All of them meaningful. This is one of those crescendo mm -hmm. uh, chapters in my mind. Uh, recently, I had a lady who, in our church, a um, new lady in our church, who bought a Bible and was like, so excited about reading. She said, would you sign the front of the Bible? Which is kind of, it was funny, yeah. too, but, it, you know, I, know I, I feel a little stupid, you know. But it, it, it's I didn't write book, it. Yeah, I didn't write but it. I, but I, I was still honored yeah. to be a part of that. Yeah. She was expressing this desire. And she said, write down some of your favorite places. And I had two or three. It, absolutely. One of them yeah. just not just a verse, but Romans 8. Mm -hmm. Romans 8. Totally. And that's why this means so much yeah. to me. Well, thank you everybody for joining us in another episode of Church Conversations Over Coffee. We hope that you found this helpful and encouraging. And I do, again, just want to invite you to uh, leave us a rating on wherever you're listening to this podcast to help more people see it. Uh, if you have questions or comments or, or want to know something specific, feel free to leave a comment uh, in the comment section or email us at office at lifewayconnect.com. Uh, we would love to answer some of your questions here or talk about things that would be helpful for you. We're now done with our Roman series, so we kind of need some more uh, help with figuring out what we're going to talk about. Next week is Mother's Day. <laughs> yeah, next week's Mother's Day. We hope to see you at Lifeway Church at uh, lifewayconnect.com at 10 a.m. on Sundays. From all of us here at Lifeway Church, God bless, and we'll see you later.